What's up YouTube? Welcome back to another edition of Coding with Robbie. My name's Robbie and in this video we're going to be checking out Loom, which is a new static site generator for Dino. So that's Dino, not Deno or Dino. I said it wrong in my last uh, Dino video, so give me a break this time. And uh, yeah, it looks pretty dope. So here's their website and it's a fast and flexible static site generator. And it's really easy to get started with. And um, yeah, they got a ton of plugins. So you can use a ton of different templating engines. So whether you want to do JSX or Liquid, or uh, they got Pug, they got a bunch of them, but the default is this Nunjux uh, templating engine, which is similar to Liquid. Um, I'm just gonna be using the default one. And then yeah, they got some other plugins. Uh, they got code highlighting, SAS, uh, multi-language, some Netlify stuff. So there's a bunch of them. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna try this out right now. I'm gonna build a quick blog and then I'll let you know what I think of it. So uh, yeah, let's do it. So let's go back to the homepage and they got the command right here to set one up. So let's copy that. I'll open up my terminal, go to my dev folder. I'm gonna make a new folder called Lumi. I'll CD into that and then run the command. And it's gonna ask if you wanna use TypeScript. I'll say yes. And then you have to put the plugins you wanna install. So I just want, um, I'll do code highlight and SAS. Hit enter and it created a site for us. So let's check that out. So they give us a, a config.ts that loads the plugins. We got dino.json which has the tasks and then we got an import map. So let's run it. Let's go back here and it's dino task serve. And this is gonna build the site and start it on localhost 3000. So uh, let's check that out, localhost 3000. And we just get 404 not found and that's because we haven't created any pages yet. So let's make one, we'll do index and then for nunjux it's njk. Now let's just go hello world. Save that, go back and refresh and we get it right there. And if we update it, it should automatically update it now. So that's working, that's cool. So let's go to their documentation, get started. So we just created our first page. Um, let's see. So you can have layouts um, in this generator. So let's create a new special folder called underscore includes. And here's where you can put partials and layouts and stuff. So let's um, create layout.njk. And let's just say our layout has a header. Now let's just do a link to the homepage. So I'll go href slash robbyk.com slash a slash h1. So there we got a header and then uh, let's see. Here's their example one right here. So let's copy that. Let's paste it in. I'll put my header right here. And then we have this special content tag and that gets the page content. So let's go like that. And then um, to have our page use that, we just add some front matter. So let's go to our index and add our front matter up here. So let's say, hey, we wanna use the layout called layout.njk. And uh, let's see if that worked. We'll go back and there we go. We got it right there. So now uh, let's add some data to our page. So yeah, you can add whatever variables you want up there and you can use it within your page or layout. So let's go here, let's just go title. Um, we'll just do the title homepage. And then let's go to our layout file and we're gonna use it right here. So we can just go brackets title. Maybe I'll do Robbie K dash title. Let's see if that worked, I'll go back. And yeah, I see it right there. I made a typo though, so let's fix it. So that's cool. And uh, let's see what else we can do. Reuse your layout. So you can create a second layout file and then you just specify which one you wanna use. And you can use the same layout for multiple pages. Um, I'm not gonna do this shared data stuff right now. And then they just show that you can use different templating engines. So here's Nunjux, they show um, a JavaScript example right here and there's a bunch of other ones so yeah let's create some blog posts so let's uh, go in here I'm gonna create a new folder called posts 
And then in there, I'll just go first dash post and I'll do markdown. So I can just go my first blog post, blah, blah, blah. And let's add our front matter. Oops. We'll go up to the top, three hyphens, three hyphens, and we got layout is layout dot njk. And then for our title, we'll go uh, my first blog post. So save that and let's go back here. And now, whoops, now we can go slash posts, slash first post, and we get it right there. And it did the title correctly and everything. Let's create a second post. So I'll just copy this one, I'll call it second post. Second blog post, second blog post. So now we got another blog post, so we can go right here and go second blog post. Cool, so we got a couple blog posts, so now let's try to loop through them and display them on the home page. So it took me a while to figure out how to do this, but if you go back to the docs and you go to overview, about, where do they show it? Right here they have a base blog that you can take a look at, and there's a bunch of good examples in here. So if we go to their index.njk, they can get a list of all the posts by doing this. So let's copy this line and I'll go to my index and I'll make this say uh, latest posts. Maybe I'll do an H2 instead. And then let's get all our posts. So this is gonna find um, all our pages that have type posts in the front matter. So we're gonna have to add that. And then it looks like they um, did some like uh, ordering, but I'm not going to do that right now. So there we go. Let's add type posts to our posts. So let's go in here and go type posts and I'll add it to both of them. And now by adding that, uh, where was I? This post variable should now have both our posts. So let's loop through those. We'll just go for posts and posts. And then for each post, Actually, let's wrap this in a UL. And then for each post, we'll just do an LI, an AHREF. And inside there, we'll go post. And it's not just dot .title. If you want to get the front matter, it's post.data.title. And that should do it. Let's try that out. And there we go. And it's not linked anywhere right now. So you actually automatically get a URL data point thing. So let's add that post.data.url. And this should have a slash right there. Let's go back. And there we go. Now we can get to our two blog posts. And um, another cool thing you can do in this static site generator is partials. So we can create another folder in our includes folder called templates. And let's just say I created post.njk. And then this will render this guy right here. And then to use it, you just go include quotes and then a path to the file starting from this includes folder. So you don't have to add includes. So it just be template slash post.njk. Hopefully, let's see if that worked. And yeah, there we go, we got our uh, link still. Let me make sure there's no errors, there's not. So let's check out SAS. So it's similar to Jekyll to where if you put an underscore in the folder name, it's not gonna include it in the built site. And when your site builds, it goes to this underscore site directory. So uh, let's create an assets folder. And since it doesn't have an underscore, it's gonna get added to here once we have files in it. So let's create style.scss. And in here, let's just go margin zero, padding zero. Let's just do some nesting to make sure it works. There we go, there's some SAS. And uh, let's see, yep. And it builds it and automatically converts it to uh, .css. So let's link that in our layout uh, file. 
So let's go to includes layout and let's just link it up here. Link rel is equal to style sheet. href is slash asset slash style dot CSS. And there we go, that should be hooked up and it is. Um, and yeah, that's kind of the basics. That's how you can build a basic blog. And there's a bunch more stuff you can do. So I haven't even looked at this data stuff yet, but it looks like you can create a data file. Let's see. So it says, this can be fine for a few pages, but you time, blah, 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 same amount, data files to the rescue. In your project, create a data.yaml file. So let's do that. Data.yml, I forgot the underscore. There we go. And then let's put in this. This is a special file containing data accessible by all pages in the same directory or subdirectory, blah, blah, blah. So what did that do? So now I guess I can omit that uh, layout front matter from our uh, pages. So let's go back here and let's just delete it from all three. Let's see if it still works. Um, no errors, let's go back. Seems to still be working, so that's pretty cool. And I guess you could put whatever you want in here. Let's just say, uh, I can't even think of any examples, but say I want my social network stuff in here, I could go Twitter is it's Robbie K. And then maybe it's used on multiple pages. I could just go, um, do I just go Twitter and it shows up? Let's see. That's cool, so now those variables are available on every single page. And uh, let's see, what else is there? Okay, so let's try that code highlighting plugin actually. Let's go to plugins, um, code highlight. And then to use it, I think it just does it automatically. So let's go to one of our posts, I'll just add some JavaScript here. And let's go function, hello. Let's see if that works. Let's go back to our post, first blog post. So it looks like it is adding the classes and everything. We probably just need a style sheet. So yeah, it looks like you have to import it. So let's add that to our style.scss. See if that fixed it. There we go, syntax highlighting's working, that's nice. So yeah, I think that shows the basics of the Loom uh, static site generator. So what do I think of it? Well, I think it's pretty cool. I really like that it has layouts and partials and that it supports SAS and a ton of different rendering engines. So I probably would use this personally if I get the chance. Um, so I know Dino is not super popular yet, but it really doesn't matter because it's just gonna output static files at the end of the day, which can be hosted anywhere. So yeah, I would definitely use this on my own stuff. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and subscribe, leave a comment, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.